Good morning. Just left the shelter. Stayed at Cosby Knob last night. It was probably a party of five or six, and me and another hiker that was there. Party of six was a gang of law enforcement officers, so they were quite loquacious. Uh, morning, noon, and night. Uh, got a 10.8 miles to the truck, so I'm coming out. This is pretty much what I'm dealing with on the trail here. Uh, rocks, rocks, and more rocks. It, uh, rained right before I got to the shelter, so I was sopping wet. And pretty much all my stuff sopping wet. Uh, and it's really muggy. It's not hot, but it's muggy, so I think the humidity is about 90%. Yesterday I tried an old scuba diving trick on my glasses since I forgot my cat crap anti-fogging agent. Tried spitting on them and rubbing it in to create a film. Well, that may work underwater scuba diving. It don't work glasses on the trail so there you go hiked most of the time blind and then finally when it started raining so hard I just took them off and walked with 2100 vision and missing all these slick rocks that is rather dangerous and they're slick right now as well anyway this is probably what the trail is going to look like for quite some time uh, there was water at the shelter, but not on trail side sources. And the water at the shelter is some creature living in the pipe. Went to get water, and a uh, frog or something jumped back up in the pipe. So I hope these soggy squeeze squeeze out. We'll uh, filter out toad crap. Anyways, wood's starting to come come alive. But this is pretty much how my day starting. Sun's coming up. I do not have cakes on the griddle. All right, I'll chat with you in a bit. This is Mount Camerer. I don't know how you pronounce that, but Camerer <laughs> Lookout. So it was a fire lookout, just like the fire towers in the park and, and throughout the AT. It's called a lookout rather than a tower because it is on the ground or built without a tower structure like angle iron or something like that structural steel like the rest of it was it's built from 1937 to 1939 by the ccc the civilian conservation corps and it was manned until the 1960s and then it fell into disrepair and in the somewhere around 1980 the, uh, some folks got together and I guess they rebuilt it or did something to fix it. And so this is what it looks like today. Now before there had been a fire warden in here and he'd have had a lookout and he had slept and stayed and lived in here for, I don't know how long they did it at a time, but everything that you see that was made had to be hauled in here by horse or hand or mule or something so it's another iconic spot on the at it's got a balcony uh goes all the way around catwalk if you will that the fire warden might have walked around instead of looking through the windows or something day is really hazy that's all the humidity that i've been feeling down in the in the woods but it is perched right on top of this mountain so if you got a wingsuit you could fly all the way to Pigeon Forge and I believe that over there in the distance is Clingman's Dome 
So when I, I came from there, Newfound's Gap is just a mile or so away from Clingman's Dome. So I had been drudging through all of that since I've been on the trail this trip. All right, that is it for Mount Camera Look Fire Lookout. Okay, so today the trail is just as rocky as it was yesterday and the day before. And the tough thing about today is most of it's all down. So that's tough on my knees. And not that I like the hubs either, but hey, my, uh, my knees, it's harder on my knees going down, so. I prefer each in moderation, but you take what you can get on the AT, right? So, should be coming in to Davenport Gap here uh, shortly. Just left um, Mount Camarur Fire Lookout. And, uh, Passed a few folks on the trail, not too many. So that's the thing about the T. I mean, I was in a shelter last night with eight of us, and you can uh, you can always find solitude on the AT, or you can hike in a group if you want to. Whatever works for you. But for me, I like the solitude. I'm gonna hush now and let you see a little bit of the trail without me yapping. This part of the trail is wider than lots of it. I guess that's because of the horses that they allow on it. Um, tend to make the trail wider. You can imagine bringing a horse up here on all these rocks. Like it just tears hooves all to pieces, but I'm not an equestrian type of guy, so I'm talking out of school there. But last place I'd want to be up here if a horse throws a shoe. And that happens. All right, we'll chat a little later. This is Davenport Gap Shelter. So a couple things that are a little odd about this shelter is, is one, you've got your sleeping lanes laid out for you. You know the old game when you used to ride around on vacation with your brother and sister and this is my space? This is my area. Don't come in my area. So you got it laid out here for you on the top and the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is supposedly seep 12. I bet you they've had 20 or more in here. A lot of folks also put these cans up here, put these things right here, and they hang their pack from that. Uh, and these are here to supposedly to keep the rats or the mice from climbing down Supposedly they can't get past that. I don't believe that for a second. But they get past that and uh, they can't get to your pack. But, you know, think about a mouse. What's he going to do? He's just going to jump from the top of that down to where your pack's hanging. Like all, the, uh, it, like all the places in the Smokies, it does have a fireplace. And the really unique thing about this shelter is this is the Smoky Mountain. If you're a bad hiker... This is where the rangers bring you to. And you get put in hiker jail. <laughs> now, seriously, the reason this fence is up here is they used to all have a fence like this up in here. 
uh, up at the shelters. Um, and that was for, you know, protect people from bears, basically. And that's when they didn't, people didn't practice leave no trace. They didn't practice not eating around the shelters and cooking around the shelters and leaving trash and garbage and stuff and stuff that attracted the bears. And so they did this right here, but now this is the only one that has it left. They've removed them all. And my understanding is the reason they removed it was because hikers were, the bears were coming around because the bears didn't stop immediately and hikers were feeding the bears from inside the cage uh, with the door shut. And all that did was just uh, bring more bears around. So that's my understanding. I have not researched that, but I was told that. In any case, this is Davenport, the last shelter uh, heading Nobo in the Smokies. Box signifies the box where all through hikers deposit their permit. So if you're Sobo, you put a permit in here, and then there's another box on the other end at Fontana Dam that you put your leaving the Smokies permit. Same opposite for Nobo. So this signifies I am done with the Smokies. And as soon as I cross the Davenport Road down here, uh, then I will be past the park boundary. Well, I've emerged from the wilderness, back to civilization. This is the Pigeon River I'm getting ready to cross, and Interstate 40 I'm getting ready to go under. So, not a place on gut hooks to mention the flow rate, but it looks like it's pretty good to me. Anyway, I gotta, once I get across here under 40, I got a staircase to tackle and then through the woods, I think about a mile and a half to, I think it's Green Mountain Road. And then a uh, road walk up to my truck. Yep. Well, good enough to get water, but not enough to, uh, looks dry. Not enough to put a boat in. Wow. I don't know if I've ever seen it that dry before. Other times I've been up here, all oh, this is, you couldn't see them rocks. All right, let's keep going. Just a, another hour or so. All right, so I just met Twinkle Toes and Buckles. Buckles is a girl and Twinkle Toes is a guy. And, uh, they are flip-floppers, so they're going to be getting done here in about two weeks, they think, which sounds reasonable. And they are entering the Smokies, and they've, uh, it's good to meet them, stop and chat to them. They are awesome, nice folks. So you see them down south of the Smokies, treat them to a snack or food or beer. I'll, uh, I'll throw their selfie up here that we took. All right. Probably the only place on AT where you got a set of steps that have a handrail. All right. This is Ascend the Steps, take two. Why take two? Well, I ditched my pack. So I'm not only I'm not going to slack pack this small one and a half miles. I'm going to no pack it because my truck will come right by the road down there off of 40. But my keys were in my pack, so of course I climb the steps with no keys, and I had to go back down them. And now I'm climbing them again. Stupid hiking tricks. All right, for all intents and purposes, this ends my trip, this section hike on the Appalachian Trail. I'm now at Green Mountain Road, I think it is. That uh, if I go that way, goes to the hostel. I go that way, I uh, continue a no-bow hike. So coming out here, my truck's up there. 
and this is it for me although this blue indicates that it is a high water route so if this stream right down here is too swollen to get across then you can take that route so i might try that just so just to stay on at as long as i can otherwise that's it for this video i appreciate you watching as always appreciate you and we'll see you out here <laughs>